everyone down. This is a robbery. Hey, bro, the average bank robber only makes a few grand. Shut up. Breaking news. We have live footage from the bank robbery. Say it. This isn't financial advice, so please seek professional help before doing anything I say. My grandparents are telling me about money now versus when they were my age. And the conclusion I came to is money isn't real since it's lost 90% of its value in their lifetime. So let's learn how to counteract that. Well, you see, back in my day, we used to get gasoline for a quarter a gallon. Hey, Grandpa. Grandpa, that's the lamp you're talking to. Ah. Uh, so here we are with level one, negative money. And I wish these people the best since I can only imagine the crushing burden that is debt. I mean, in fact, 77% of Americans are in debt, but that number doesn't mean as much as you'd think. In fact, my debt has made me more money than it's actually taken from me, which I'll explain at a later level. Yo, is that the debt collector? Oh, nah. Hello, Mr. Dorb, are you there? Uh, he's not home. Is that you, Mr. Dorb? Uh, uh, no, 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 it's not. So we're going to talk about bad debt, since not all debt is bad. So bad debt is often in correlation with the purchase of things you can't afford with money that's not yours, such as expensive cars, clothes, bad education decisions, and honestly, anything that you can't afford to pay off at the end of the month. Since interest rates can go crazy, especially with credit cards averaging around 24% a year. So let's say you have to get yourself 10 grand grand into credit card debt. Alright, so here's the options you have. So you can pay $950 a month and have it cleared in a year with only $1,105 of that being interest. Bro, I can't afford that monthly payment. <sighs> okay, well, what can you afford? Uh, about 200 a month. Oh, okay. I got a deal for you. We can do that, but it's going to take nearly 20 years to pay it off with the interest being $35,815. And so if you're in this situation, I got a great strat for you. Start looking for how much you can sell your organs for, since that's a tough one for you to be in. But honestly, you really shouldn't end up here unless you were forced into a tough spot, or you're just carelessly financially illiterate, which after this video, you shouldn't be. All right, you promise you'll pay me for my organs, right? 100%. Okay, <laughs> let's do it. Yo, wait, wait, where'd he go? And now we have level two, the paycheck to paycheck connoisseur. And as I'm sure you can guess it, this is where you live from one paycheck to the next, without saving anything, aka scraping by. And you know, I feel like this is more common than you'd like to imagine, but honestly, this lifestyle is a trap in itself. Since you have no savings, then one emergency and you're straight into the hole. Oh, it hurts so much! I can't afford this! In this situation, you need to either figure out how to spend less or make more, since living paycheck to paycheck is no way to live, and honestly, probably right up there with the stress of being in debt. Yo, m my check's not right. Okay, we'll get the rest to you. Next paycheck. <sighs> no, you, 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 you can't do that. Daddy, chill. On to level three, surviving but not thriving. And at this point, maybe you're building a little emergency saving, but hey, if that emergency hits, guess what? You might find yourself set back a level, and you even know at this point you really shouldn't consider buying any luxuries since the biggest luxury in life is to not have financial stress. All right, I'm hopping out. Oh. You'll get him back in here. All right, sir, that will be a million dollars. And honestly, the scary fact about this is that you're broke! You're fucking poor! And probably you'll have a hard time retiring at this level or any of the ones before. I mean, let's say you start investing at the average age of 35 and you manage to invest $300 a month for 30 years. It would be close to 600 k but we gotta keep in mind what I said at the start. Inflation very well could chunk out 70-90% of that, leaving you with less than 100 k in 2023 dollars to retire. Scary, right? And honestly, you gotta keep in mind, at that point, you'll be considered a senior citizen. Alright, Jimmy, let me tell you a story. The year was 2050 when the AI took the last job, and then by 2052, they discontinued all currencies. So I worked all my life to have money for this family, and what for? Your VR access is restricted for speaking of reality. You have committed a crime against AI for speaking of before the year 2060. Authorities are on their way. Jimmy, get me out of here. Jimmy never existed. And here we are with level 4, the middle class. And to be quite honest with you guys, this level oftentimes isn't necessarily more financially literate, but they do usually have a higher income, leading to obviously more opportunities. And you know with the middle class shrinking, I'd like to think that more people understand the lower levels rather than the upper, but that's why I'm going to spill a lot of financial secrets for you guys. In the news today, we have an update on the economy. 
Inflation is up 7% this month, and people are being laid off in waves. And tensions are rising. Hello? I'm sorry, Doorbowl. We're gonna have to let you go. The number one way to earn more money is by spending less of the money you already have. There was a while in my life where I lived off of peanut butter sandwiches and garbanzo beans, and that takes it a little bit too far, but now I shamelessly buy store brand only, and very rarely go out to eat. I live off of less than $1,300 a month, and no, I don't live with my parents. Hey bro, look at all of these goodies I got. You fool, that shopping trip will just put you one more day away from financial freedom. But it's good. And unhealthy, so your life has now been shortened. Yeah, I never saw it that way. Wake up! Also, don't buy things to impress others, since that's not the kind of people you'd like to attract into your life. And no, you don't need to keep up appearances with the people around you. It's not as important as it's made out to be. Don't fall for the FOMO. <sighs> My business is really struggling. I think it might go under. Um, uh, okay. Bruh. And here we are at level 5, negative money, but smart. So at the start of this video, I told you guys I was in debt, but it paid me. Well, what I was referring to is that I only use a credit card to buy things. I don't use cash nor debit. And I know there's this belief that credit cards are bad, but if you understand how they work, then it's nothing but benefits and free money. So something to understand is what makes a good credit score. I have a nearly perfect credit score, and I was often told that I'm taking a little too strict about it, but hey, I prefer to take W's. So here's how I did it. Hey, Bobby. Look, look, I'm American. I think I'll use my credit card. Alright, so a credit score is made up of five things. So first is the amount owed, aka your utilization. So let's say you have a credit limit of $100, and you have $50 spent of that. It puts you at 50% utilization, which is horrible. I personally aim for 5% or below. Now on to new credit, which is pretty much just opening any new line of credit, loans, new credit cards, and so on. And then we have the length of credit history, which as I'm sure you can assume is how long you've had credit for. And I'm not saying unpaid credit, just loaned money that you paid off each month, but there is something to be aware of. Let's say you have a credit card from 5 years ago and then you decide to get another one. That will cut your length of credit to 2.5 years unless you have other existing credit. Also keep in mind if you cancel your first line of credit, it will remove that credit history. And then there's credit mix, which is pretty much just having different types of credit, you know, car loans, mortgages, credit cards, and so on. But honestly, this doesn't really matter that much since I got to just under 800 credit score of just one credit card. And then the most important part is payment history, which I'm gonna be harsh here. Pay this statement in full every month, not the minimum, and honestly pay it down multiple times a month if your utilization is too high, and throw on auto pay. And if you're worried about not having enough money for the auto pay, then you aren't responsible enough to be using a credit card anyways. Alright, so I'd like to finance this car. Well alright, what's your credit score? 800. <laughs> And the biggest secret of them all is that most of the richest people in the world are in fact in debt. I mean, let's use rental properties as an example. Let's say you get a mortgage and you have a tenant aka a renter in the property. If the tenant pays more than the mortgage, then you are profiting from that loan. And also the appreciation of the property, obviously. But don't do this without understanding it completely, since there's a lot of things such as cap rate, comps, repair, eviction, and so on. And if you don't know what that is, you could very much financially ruin your life. Bro, I messed up big time. I got the wrong tenant. What makes you say that? I mean, let's take a trip to the property. <laughs> You are done for, bro. Eviction aren't cheap. And here we are at level 6. Infinite money. So I'm going to explain how to make your money work for you, since honestly that's the best way to use your money. So I'm just going to say what I do without mentioning any businesses. So first of all, I keep very little money in my check-ins and or instant cash, since it doesn't make me money. In fact, it loses money in inflation. But instead I put it into a cash account which yields me 5.5% a year. And if I need that money, I can transfer it to my check-ins within a day. You might think that's not a high percentage, but let's just say you you have 10k sitting in there. That's nearly a free $50 a month for doing nothing. A freeloader. Get to work. That's what I thought. And once you have a 6 month to a year emergency fund in that quick access cash account that's insured, I recommend putting most of your money in investments. Please be smart since not all investments share the same safety profile, but let's take a little look at what investing can do. Alright, I want to put $1000 into the S&P 500 and on top of that $100 a month. Alright. The rate of return is about 10% a year. 100 years later. I spent my whole life investing, and it's now worth 180 million. Now it's your turn to make a legacy of me. Go crazy, Dorb. Now let's say if it was only 40 years, it would only be 
576,000, but you get my point. Compound interest goes crazy, especially over long periods of time. And also, I should mention, a lot of stocks offer dividends, meaning they'll pay you a certain amount for just holding the stock, which should be set to reinvest unless you're retired. There's also REITs, which pay a high dividend, but you must keep in mind that it's taxed as income, but sometimes you gotta realize every dollar you waste is a dollar that's not going to your future. I'll buy it. 20 years later, I'll buy it. It should also be mentioned the best way to get ridiculously rich is by having multiple sources of income because, I mean, even the most high paying jobs most likely won't be making you millions a year. And if you get fired, your income goes to zero very quickly. What is that? Oh, it goes off every time I get paid. Oh, uh, well, can you turn it off? You're making me feel kind of poor. And now onto the most disturbing part. Level 7, infinite power. At the end of the day, money is just a value voucher. I mean, to be honest, its value is only in the perception that it has value. Kind of like a shiny rock. But money can buy anything, and I mean anything. You have a price, and if you're trying to argue against this, if you've had a job, you've already lost the argument since a job pays you what you value you accept. Also, if I had a billion dollars and I said, if you eat that dog poop, I'll give you 100 million, I bet most of you probably would. Unless, of course, you have a priceless dignity, but I mean, let's be honest, that's pretty rare. Dive off into that lake and I'll pay you 10 grand. All right, deal. Yikes. Looks like I had to save some money. But what really concerns me is, once you have infinite money, which is a number, and it's probably around 100 million, since at that point you can buy nearly anything, since you make almost a million a month passively, but once you've gotten everything, the only thing left to strive for is either control and power, or making the world a better place. And knowing how the human brain works, you eventually build a tolerance to things that must go to a deeper extreme in order to get the same feeling. And when you can afford to do everything, eventually you run out of things until you either control yourself, or you get into a really dark place and reach above your twisted and distorted tolerance. Power Power corrupts absolutely, and money is power. Let that sink in. <sighs> These five-star restaurants just aren't hitting the same anymore. I wonder what a dog tastes like. What did he say? And a few words I'd like to add about money is in regards to spending. Since I feel like here in first world countries we spend in excess, so understand most unimportant purchases are impulse buys. So always wait a couple days before buying any non-necessities to really think if it's worth it. And really think about everything that money could buy instead. Freedom is priceless, but in fact it does have a price, and it increases each dollar you waste. And go ahead and join my Discord and Twitter, and feel free to click this video right here.